Before you can begin using your USB temperature only data logger, you will need to download the software. Open your web browser and go to www.easylogusb.com. If you look at the web page, you will see additional videos on how to set up the data logger and download the data. There is also a file that contains instructions on how to install, but we will cover all of these procedures in this video. Towards the bottom of the page, there is a box that you can click on to begin the software download. When prompted, choose the Save As option. Then select the location to save the zip file and click Save. When the download is complete, go to the location where you saved the zip file. Open the zip file and select setup.exe to begin the installation. To avoid any possible installation issues, I am going to extract the contents of the zip file to a new folder and run setup.exe from there. After a few moments, the software install wizard will begin. Installation is straightforward. Just click on next to proceed. Accept the license agreement. Click install. Then finish. After another brief moment, the device driver installation will begin. Click on install. When prompted, click on OK after the driver installation is complete. After installing the software, insert the data logger into an available USB port on your computer and launch EasyLog USB. After the program is loaded, click on the option Set up and start the USB data logger. If a window appears alerting you that the logger contains data that has not been downloaded, go ahead and press OK. By default, the name of the device is EasyLog GFX. You can change the name of the device to anything you like, using 15 characters or less. I'll name mine device Pharmacy Fridge. Next, choose the unit of measure you wish the data to be recorded in, Fahrenheit or Celsius. I will choose Fahrenheit. Lastly, using the drop-down arrow, choose how often you wish to have the device record the temperature. Notice the more frequent the device records the temperature, the shorter the time it takes to fill the memory of the device. I will choose to read the temperature every two minutes. If you're happy with your settings, click Next to proceed. Now select how you would like the display to function. You can either have the LCD and backlight on for a short period of time after pressing a button, or you can have the LCD stay on all the time and only have the backlight stay on for a short period of time after pressing a button. Notice the note telling you about the prolonged use of the LCD and backlight. I don't mind pressing a button to activate the display, so I will keep the default setting of the LCD and backlight staying on for a short period of time. Next, you will need to decide the security of the device. If you uncheck the box, any user can view the current measurements, but they cannot do anything such as stop and start the logging. You will need a PC to stop the logger and view the data history. I will leave the box checked, but only because this is a demonstration. Click Next to continue. Select the temperature alarms you would like to set, either high, low, both, or none. I will record both. Now type in the values for the temperature alarms. The temperature range is negative 22 degrees Fahrenheit to 176 degrees Fahrenheit or negative 30 degrees Celsius to 80 degrees Celsius. I will make the high alarm 45 degrees Fahrenheit and the low 33 degrees Fahrenheit. Now that alarm values are set, you can choose to check the hold box if you wish the data logger to report there was an alarm condition even after the temperature has returned to the set parameters. Again, click on next to continue. Next, select the humidity alarms you would like to set, either high, low, both, or none. I will record both. Now type in the values for the humidity alarms. 
the maximum percentage for either alarm is 100%. I will make the high alarm 60% and the low 25%. Like the temperature alarms, I can also choose to check the hold box if I wish the data logger to report there was an alarm condition even after the humidity has returned to within the set parameters. Click on Next to continue. On the next screen, enter a value for the number of consecutive readings in an alarm condition the logger must register before it is indicated by the screen, LED, or sounder, if enabled. If you increase the value, there will be a delay when the logger will trigger an alarm. For an example, I configure the logger to perform a reading every two minutes. If I increase the value to three, the logger will not indicate an alarm if the alarm condition is six minutes or less. I will leave the value at the default setting of one. You now have the option to disable the LEDs or sounder from being activated in the event of an alarm. If you wish to disable, simply uncheck the boxes. You can now choose to have the USB data logger to start recording the temperature right away or you can set a desired date, time, or threshold. I will set it up so that the logger will not begin to start recording until it reads the temperature under the configured high alarm setting. When done, click on finish and remove the logger from the USB port. If you choose to start the data logger after a threshold has been met, you will see delayed start at the top of the screen along with the condition that must be met. In this example, when the temperature is below 45 degrees Fahrenheit. If you choose to delay the start of the data logger, you will see delayed start at the top of the screen along with the date and time when the logging will begin. If you choose to start the data logger when the button is pressed, you will see the word armed on the display. You will then need to push the button below the check mark and the data logger will begin recording temperature samples. Place the cap back over the USB connector and place the device in the desired location. I recommend placing it in an area where it will at least likely be disturbed. Okay, here we have a thermometer that I just removed from my refrigerator. When I press a button, the LCD and backlight both come on at the same time. At a glance, I am able to see the current temperature and humidity level. I also see there is an alarm because the red LED is blinking at the top left of the data logger. Oops, display went off. Remember, the thermometer is configured for the LCD and backlight to only come on for a short time. No worries, press a button and the LCD and backlight comes right back on. Now had I selected the option to keep the LCD on and keep the backlight lit for a short time, I would see the contents on the screen but there would be no backlight lit to make it easier to see. So I press the button again and let's just freeze the image so that we can take our time reviewing the contents on the screen. Going back to the alarm, in addition to the LED light, I see a box in the top middle of the screen with an arrow pointing up. This means that the high temperature alarm has been activated. If the low temperature alarm was activated, then the arrow would be pointing down. If you see the easy log cube is spinning in the top left corner, your logger is logging. A battery icon will appear when the battery is starting to run low. I see the current temperature and current humidity level. And three icons at the bottom. One's with the letters GFX, one with the italicized letter I, and a wrench. Let's review what these icons can do. Pressing the button below the GFX icon allows you to view the data on the display in graphic and text format and is only visible while the device is actively logging. You may have to press the button twice as when you press it the first time it will activate the backlight. When the graph appears you will see the temperature record track since the logging was last started. If you look in the upper or lower right corner of the display, you will see the current temperature the device is reading. If you take another look at the GFX icon, and your device is capable of reading humidity levels, you will see the number 2 next to the letters. Press it, and you will see the humidity record track since the logging was last started.
In the upper or lower right corner of the screen, you will see the current humidity level the device is currently reading. Notice that the GFX icon has now changed to TXT. Press it and you'll return to the default text screen. If you choose, you can leave the device in graphic mode for either the temperature or humidity. Pressing the button under the eye icon can be used to view summary data. Again, you may have to press the button twice and pressing it the first time will activate the backlight. The logging must be started for you to view the data. If it's not, you will see a series of dashes where data values would appear. After you push the button a couple of times, you will see the maximum and minimum temperatures that were logged since the logging was last started. At the bottom, you will see the date and time when the logging last started or reset. If you don't push the button after a few seconds, the device will return to the default screen. Notice the icon of a downward facing triangle. If you push the button below it, you will see the maximum and minimum humidity levels that have been logged since the data was last cleared. At the bottom, you will see the date and time when the logging was last started or reset. Also notice there is a reset icon in the lower right corner. Press the button below it and you can reset the record since the logging was last started. Press the button below the triangle once more and you will see the current amount of used memory and the number of readings since the logging was last started. After reviewing this last screen, you will see that the only action icon is a return arrow. Press the button below it and you will return to the default screen where the current temperature and humidity are displayed. If not pressed, the device will return to the default screen after a few seconds. Pressing the button below the wrench will allow you to control the alarms, logging, and review the logger settings. The first thing I will see are a list of options, mute alarm, stop logging, and logger settings. At the bottom of the display, there are three icons, a return arrow, a downward facing triangle, and a check mark. If I push the button below the return arrow, I will go back to the previous screen. If I push the button below the triangle, the option will change to stop logging. If I keep pushing, I will cycle through the three choices on the display. If I push the button below the check mark, it will execute my selection. With the mute alarm already selected, I will be able to silence the alarm. I am then asked if I am sure. There are now two icons at the bottom of the display a X and a check mark. If I wasn't sure, I would press the button below the X, but I am sure, so I will press the button below the check mark to execute. The alarm is now silenced and the data logger will return to the default screen. Let's assume you wish to download the data to your PC, but before you do, you wish to silence the alarm and stop the data logger from logging at the same time. You would press the button under the wrench, then press the button under the triangle one time. The stop logging option should now be selected. Press the button under the check mark to execute the action. When asked if you are sure, press the button under the check mark again. The alarm will now be silenced, the logging will have stopped, and you will return to the default screen. If you wish to start logging with the device, push the button below the wrench again twice if the backlight is off and you will see the option to start logging and logger settings. Just press the button under the check mark to execute start logging and again to confirm that you are sure. One option we have not looked at is the logger settings. Again, press the button under the wrench twice if the backlight is off, press the button below the triangle until you have selected logger settings, then press the button under the check mark. You can now review the current configurations of the data logger, such as the name of the unit, sample rate, and serial number. If you continue to push the button below the triangle, you will see the alarm settings for the temperature and humidity. When you have reached the final screen, you will see only one icon, the return arrow. Press the button below it, and you will return to the first list of options.
Since you are removing the device from the controlled environment for a period of time, I recommend going ahead and stopping the logging directly from the data logger once you removed it from the controlled environment. Now take your data logger and connect it to the USB port on your computer using the included USB cable. Once connected, launch the EasyLog USB software. Click on the option to stop the USB data logger and download data. On the next screen, there is a message at the top of the window saying that the logger is in the stop condition. Note, if you did not stop the data logger directly from the device, the software will stop it for you. Looking down, you will see the logging sessions that can be downloaded. In this demo, you will see that there are about three of them. Looking down a little further, you see the location where the logging session records will be downloaded to. Click on Browse and you can browse to a new location to save. Below that, there is a box that you can check that will allow you to rename the files as they are being saved. I will go ahead and check the box so you can see what will happen. Click on OK and the Windows Explorer window will appear in the location you wish to save the records. You will have the opportunity to save the file in a different location if you wish. I am going to go ahead and keep the file name as it's pretty descriptive and will just click on save. Since there are three different logging sessions, I will need to perform this routine for the next two sessions. After saving the third logging session file, the easy log graph will appear after a few seconds. Note that if you do not click the option to rename the title while saving, EasyLog USB will automatically save all of the records to the designated location, giving it its own descriptive file name, and automatically launch EasyLog Graph after clicking on OK. Getting back to the EasyLog Graph, and since there are three different logging sessions, a window will appear for each logging session. I am going to minimize the first couple of windows. The graph has interpreted data from the records that were recently saved. You can remove certain lines from the graph by unchecking the box next to the corresponding name of the line. Of course, checking the box returns the line to the graph. If you scroll across the graph, you will see the date, time, and recorded data when the record was taken. At the bottom, you will see the date and time range of the records. Along the top, there is a toolbar that has multiple features. If you move your mouse over the icons, a description of the functions appears below the icon and at the bottom of the window. If you modify the graph in any way, such as what lines you wish to view, you can save the graph with the changes you made. Click on the magnifying glass to zoom in and out of the graph. The clock will allow you to zero in on a specific time period. The printer will allow you to print the report. Export will allow you to export the report to various formats such as CSV, JPEG, PDF, data or graph, or Microsoft Excel, data and graph. Marked samples will highlight the graph every time a record was taken. Statistics will show quick information such as minimum and maximum readings of the temperature, dew point, and humidity along with the average and standard readings. If you click on Data View, you can view the details of each record taken. Any record that is outside of the set limits will be highlighted in red, and below the set limits will be highlighted in blue. If you're only interested in viewing the alarm records, you can simply click on the Show Alarms Only icon in the upper left corner. Notice the icon name will change to Show All Readings to return to the default view. It is important to remember that the device was stopped prior to downloading the data. Before you can use the data logger again, you will need to rerun the setup and start the data logger options. You should not need to change any values except the delay start option. You can start the logging immediately from the device, but the data logger will likely go into an alarm mode. This can be an issue if you selected the hold option when setting the alarm conditions. You can view previously saved data at any time by selecting the appropriate option from the menu. You can also launch EasyLog Graph from your Windows menu.